The Truth in Lending Act of 1968, also known as Regulation Z, defends consumers against unlawful credit practices in real estate. Lenders who violate the Truth in Lending Act may lose money, spend time in jail, and tarnish their reputations in the real estate industry. As a future real estate professional, you must be aware of the Truth in Lending Act and how it works. Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com. Today we're talking about the Truth in Lending Act. Let's get started. All right, so what is the Truth in Lending Act? Well, the Truth in Lending Act protects consumers against unfair and predatory lending practices from credit companies. This act, passed in 1968, requires that lenders fully explain to consumers the terms and conditions of their loans. According to the TILA, all creditors must disclose the following information on credit transactions. And I'll put these on the screen. One, identity of the creditor. Two, annual percentage rate three, finance charging, four, number of payments, five, monthly payment costs, and then six, the late fees. Now, the Truth in Lending Act is part of the Consumer Credit Protection Act, which protects consumers from creditors, banks, and lenders of all kinds. So what is Regulation Z? Well, when researching the Truth in Lending Act, you may have come across the term Regulation Z, or maybe you've just heard people call it Regulation Z. Well, that's just because people use these terms interchangeably. And in most cases, that's totally okay, because Regulation Z is part of the Truth in Lending Act. So really, if you're using these terms interchangeably, it's not that big of a deal. Now, what loans do cover the Truth in Lending Act or Regulation Z? Well, it covers most loans, and I'm gonna put these on the screen. So we've got car loans, mortgages, reverse mortgages, credit card loans, and home equity lines of credit. So why is the Truth in Lending Act so important to understand for real estate professionals if it primarily has to deal with lenders? Well, the Truth in Lending Act ensures that lenders provide consumers with a closing disclosure. Remember those terms I explained earlier? I'll put them on the screen again, slightly different, but more specific. Loan terms, purchase price, monthly payment amount, closing costs, other fees, all those things. Well, that is there because of the Truth in Lending Act. Truth in Lending Act requires that those things be in place via a closing disclosure. Hopefully that makes sense. So what actions violate the Truth in Lending Act? Well, if they improperly disclose the following credit terms. So I'll put these on the screen as well. If they don't identify the identity of the lender uh, or amount financed, annual percentage rate, finance charges, or any of those, essentially that's a violation of the Truth in Lending Act. Lenders are responsible for these violations and will face penalties for incorrectly disclosing information regardless of the intent. So now let's do an example in real estate. Say that a real estate agent makes the following deal with a mortgage company. If the agent recommends a mortgage company to their clients, the company will give the agent a commission for certain types of loans. The mortgage company then pressures the recommended borrowers into choosing a certain type of mortgage loan, even if there are better financial options other than this one. This behavior would violate the Truth in Lending Act, as each party has ulterior motives and is engaging in predatory lending practices. So then what are the penalties for violating the Truth in Lending Act? Well, if a creditor violates the Truth in Lending Act for any reason, they may be fined $5,000 or even face one year of imprisonment or both in severe cases. So who enforces the Truth in Lending Act? Well, there's three different agencies that enforce the Truth in Lending Act and safeguard consumers from corrupt creditors. These agencies are the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC, uh, two, the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau, or three, the Office of Comptroller of the Currency. So let's talk a little bit about those indefinitely because I haven't really covered that much in the series yet or on this channel. So obviously the FTC is the primary agency that protects consumers from unlawful and anti-competitive business practices. This was created in 1914 and the original purpose was to take down big monopolies that violate antitrust laws. While the FTC still upholds antitrust laws, as we've talked pretty much in detail on this channel, its role has expanded into regulating lending companies and enforcing the Truth in Lending Act. If a lending company breaks federal law, the FTC will penalize them and protect the rights of the consumers. Now, what about this Consumer Protection Financial Bureau? Well, the CPFB is a government agency that ensures that banks, credit companies, and lenders treat consumers fair. If a consumer feels a creditor is breaking the Truth in Lending Act, they can file a complaint with the CPFB and then essentially they will look into the issue. The CPFB also informs consumers about providing educational lending resources, including guides for buying a house and getting a loan, things like that. And then lastly, the Office of Comptroller of the Currency. 
I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. Actually, in doing my research for this specific topic, I really wasn't familiar with it. Um, but essentially, the OCC supervises national banks and requires creditors to fix situations where loan terms are disclosed inaccurately. The OCC even offers a PDF handbook on its website breaking down the Truth in Lending Act and how it applies to their supervision of national banks. So what exactly does the Truth in Lending Act not cover? Because it seems like it covers a lot, right? Well, it doesn't cover student loans, business loans, commercial loans, or loans over $25,000 unless they are for housing. So it's important to note that, again, this Truth in Lending Act, well, you know, it's, it's involved in a lot of things and it's not involved in every source of lending. And so just keep that in mind. But, but luckily, there are other laws that cover, you know, those areas, such as the Equal Opportunity Act and things like that. So what is the Fair Credit Billing Act? You might have also heard about this one, and I want to talk about it a little bit as well because this is covered, uh, you know, involved in the Truth in Lending Act. Well, this plays a important role because it was kind of the additional law. It, 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 it strengthened the Truth in Lending Act. So it was enacted in 1974, and essentially it amended the Truth in Lending Act by ensuring creditors cannot negatively impact an individual's credit before an investigation is done. And essentially this allows, and I'll put these on the screen, um, to dispute unauthorized charges, finance charges uh, for incorrect amounts or incorrect dates, questionable charges, things like that. And then there was the Dodd-Frank Truth in Lending Act. And this is another notable act that you should be aware of that amended the Truth in Lending Act. And essentially this was done in 2010, which requires the following extra protections from lending companies. Put them on the screen. Uh, mortgage loan officers need a license to offer credit loans. Lenders must adjust the dollar threshold for exempt consumer credit annually. And then lenders must make reasonable determinations of a consumer's ability to pay back the credit of a home. Now the Dodd-Frank Truth and Lending Act is incredibly important. It means that creditors cannot give out loans to borrowers who likely cannot repay them. And this is important for a couple reasons. If you're familiar with your history and you've been watching all of our videos on these definitions and exam topics, you'll remember that we talked a little bit about the 2008 financial crisis. Essentially, people were getting loans where they had no income um, and it was no down payment no down payment they called them ninja loans and it was an insane really really an insane time like anybody could get a house well obviously you know it's great you know everyone wants to have housing and stuff like that but if people can't afford the housing and they're getting these these you know loans and then years later you know it catches up to them that's really bad for everybody not just the market but the consumer so the dodd frank truth and lending act came two years after that and it kind of made it a little bit more difficult now, now don't get me wrong you know a lot of people can still get loans um you know pretty easily as, as long as you have you know income and a history of income and things like that but essentially the dodd frank and truth and lending act was probably the most recent and most important act so just keep that in mind come exam day. So what do you need to know for the real estate exam? Well, the Truth in Lending Act plays a crucial role in protecting home buyers and other lendees against unfair credit practices. Remember, the Truth in Lending Act prohibits unfair credit practices that are designed to put more money in mortgage brokers' pockets. This act protects consumers who are taking out home mortgage loans and home equity lines of credit. Knowing this is imperative to passing your exam and succeeding as a real estate agent. For more on antitrust laws and fair housing, click the video here and click here to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.